Well, today I'm trying to de demystify the assembly of an Ibex trailer with a green speed rack on the back. We have is just a simple Allen number four that we're going to use, little thread lock, little ratchet, a uh, nuts and bolts to assemble the uh, fender. The kit comes with a five millimeter bolt but uh, I don't think it's going to be long enough so I went out and bought these additional five millimeter by 20. Hopefully they'll do the job. And then for spacers since I'm going with a uh, Woody's custom fender the uh, spacers I'm going to use are these number uh, 12 washers. So the trailer itself went together fairly well, got out of the box, came out of the box. You had to put the yoke together. Two nuts that just tightened up. Bought a uh, liner from WonderTech as well as their cargo nut. Here's the fender that will be mounted on the back. Beautiful job. It's uh, leopard wood, maple, and mahogany. Woody really, Cody did an outstanding job on this. Um, and the back here, the only thing that was really hard, or not hard, but a little frustrating was attaching this. The rubber is so tight in here, took a little uh, encouragement from a hammer to get it to seat properly. But I'd rather have it tight than loose. Uh, fuel bottles, water bottles, my fuel bottles are one liter, so I wanted to get an adjustable uh, bottle carrier. As you can see, there's four attachment points on this trailer. So I've got four fuel bottles. On the back, this is the optional mounting kit, which is pretty well put together and feels secure. Front struts. Back here are the uh, spacers that I'm going to have to modify to accommodate for the struts on the fender. So that'll take a little bit of doing. Right now it's loosely put together per the instructions. This is the green speed rack. You have a couple of uh, lights on the back. Tighten up and adjust after everything's together. So this will give me additional room for some Ortley panniers. Probably a small uh, my rain kit to be strapped on the back here when everything's said and done. But uh, I'm going to take this apart right now <coughs> and try and get the uh, fenders, struts put up and I'll get back with you. Well, okay. Uh, about an hour, hour and a half later, it's complete. So just some words of wisdom through my learning experience here. When you uh, fasten the green speed rack, make sure all of your fastening points are loose. The directions say that and uh, please heed them. It's uh, very crucial to get all of the parts properly aligned. Also, it's helpful to have an extra set of hands when you're uh, putting these struts, especially the last one in place, because uh, the metal doesn't exactly line up and you really have to play with it to uh, make it work. Now, for Woody's fenders, um, this piece down inside here is a 6 millimeter. And I got a 20 millimeter length bolt just because there's not a lot of room right down in here 
to work. So would have been nice to have just a little larger washer in there, but uh, I thought a lock washer would be much better in the longevity, especially down some bumpy uh, trails that I take. So the one thing, advice I would give green speed is back here. This is going to chafe and rub on Woody's fender. Sorry, Cody, there's nothing I can do. That's just, had they elevated this cross member bar, you know, another inch, there would be no, uh, no problem with it. So uh, I wish, wish they would have done that. Uh, Cody did a great job. Again, Woody fenders out of Bend, Oregon. Outstanding, outstanding craftsman. Everything lined up. I will say, down inside of this part, the bushing, the spacer that they come with, if you're not going to use a fender, it's adequate. But what I ended up doing was taking three washers and using those as a spacer. The other spacer wouldn't allow for the struts of the fenders enough room. So, uh, all in all, the project, uh, most frustrating part was obviously putting the strut on right here, the last one. But uh, I've got to say, I'm, I'm ecstatic. I think it's going to be real good. Uh, it's going to serve my purpose. Uh, I can't say enough about uh, Cody Davis and his craftsmanship. It's just phenomenal. Toying with the idea of maybe putting on a mud flap here, but there's not a lot of clearance right here. So, plus it's really removed from where I sit from the cockpit. So, um, really good. Let me uh, put the panniers on and see what they look like. So, I'll get back right back to you. All right, now that uh, the Ortley panniers are on, um, this is kind of what the uh, little rig is going to look like. I've got a uh, four liter uh, white fuel canisters, so that'll give me a little over a gallon of white gas. Probably another seven pounds to the tonnage, but. Um, at least I'll be able to go several days and uh, not worry about fuel shortage. So those carriers worked out I think very well. They adjusted and they feel very very secure. Very little wobblage and I don't think they'll pop out of there. So that's pretty much it. Um, hope everybody enjoyed this. Uh, if there's any questions, just give me a little email and be happy to share my experience with this uh, Beast of Burden Ibex with a green speed uh, recumbent rack. That's a, for a recumbent bike with a Topeak model carrier, adjustable carriers. And uh, the beautiful part that's being covered up is leopard wood, maple, and Honduran mahogany fenders. So thanks Cody, appreciate all your hard work, and enjoyed it. Thanks guys.